So on Monday, Thursday, or Holy Thursday of Holy Week, we set our attention on the words of Jeremiah the prophet, the one who proclaimed in chapter 23 of his scroll that the righteous branch would come, the one who would be Yahweh our righteousness, the son of David. And of course, Jeremiah 26, this was the prophet that was rejected by the people of God. They didn't want to hear about this king. They wanted a different king. So they say to Jeremiah, you shall surely die, just like they say to Jesus, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Now here is the whole context of what we're talking about in Jeremiah chapter 31, the night in which Jesus is betrayed. For Jeremiah tells us that, behold, the days are coming when I will make a new covenant. That is, cut a new testament. And this is not going to be like the covenant of old when Yahweh brought the people of God out of Egypt by the hand. It's going to be better. So as we said before with Isaiah, you, you forget the former things. We have new things here, something better. It is a new covenant. It is a new testament. Oh yeah, that old testament, that's the one that they broke. And what is the penalty for breaking a testament? Well, when you cut the testament, the one who breaks it then is to be cut in half, death. So the Old Testament was broken by the people of God. But God is doing a new thing. And so he says, I'm going to make a new covenant, a new testament. It'll be a new testament in his blood. So instead of the people being cut in half, ripped asunder, it will be Jesus who will be cut and crucified on the cross. So on the night in which he's betrayed, Jesus institutes the cup of the New Testament in his blood, which is given for the forgiveness of sins. He gives us his body, which is given for our life. And here, this is the context of this New Testament that Yahweh is promising when the promised Messiah, Yahweh our righteousness, will come. So what happens when this takes place? Well, he says, in this New Testament, something new and different, something better, I will put my law within my people. In fact, I will write it upon their hearts. Now, again, when we talk about the heart, we're not talking about something like a hallmark heart, mushy, gushy emotions and feelings. We're talking about the conscience. So the Jesus, the crucified king, would be the king of the conscience, comforting us and assuring us that our guilt has been atoned for. So he will give to us his assurance with his word of promise, with the blood that speaks, and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit who is working in the heart so that we begin to walk in newness of life, new thinking, new speaking, and new acting as God's people. So as God's people who have been united in the death of Jesus and in his resurrection through baptism, we rejoice knowing the promise that God assures us that for the sake of Jesus, we found favor, that he is our God and we are his people. And we can have a conscience that is comforted now, that is assured that we know Yahweh. And Yahweh assures us by saying in this passage from Jeremiah that I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. Thanks for watching Higher Things video shorts. Remember to like, subscribe for notifications, and donate to support Higher Things at higherthings.org slash giving. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.